Do not be that person. Start doing your own shit. Go back to the point where you did shit, right? We let too much other stuff create our reality for us. And then we wonder why we fill our times with staring blankly at screens. Welcome to the Ignited Recovery Podcast, a new way forward for anyone looking for answers but feeling left out. If you've been searching for empowerment, triumph, and purpose, you've found them right here. You won't hear the same solutions and you're not going to have any excuses to fall back on because Ignited Recovery allows heroes to rise and become their best selves. I'm Dr. Adi Jaffe and I can't wait to be your guide on this journey. Are you ready to become an Ignited Hero? Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of the Ignited Recovery Secrets Podcast. I am coming to you here today with a treat. Uh, You may or may not know, I'm actually always weirded out by the fact that people listen to this and don't know that this exists, but I run an online program focused on um, addiction and mental health. It's called the Ignited Hero NoHab Program, and within the context of that, we have groups that I run. I run two groups a week, Tuesday and Friday. I don't know how long I'll be running two. I was running one for two and a half years and then Corona hit and I knew people needed more help. So we've leveled up. We now have nine, actually 10. By the time this comes out, 10 or 11 groups a week. Um, I run two of them. And every Tuesday I started out with, I call it a rant. Um, maybe it's a teachable moment. I don't know. It's one of these times where I just gotta get to go off on a topic And I am going to let you in on one of those. You don't have to pay a dime. It's all free. You get in. Forget the, there's no charge at the door. You know, pass through, go, collect 200. Um, You get to listen in on this conversation. And the reason is, I think this is a really important conversation for people, regardless of whether you're struggling with addiction and mental health, in terms of regulating your day-to-day functioning. We talk a lot about rituals and habits. This is one of those that has absolutely changed my life over the last, I'd say, probably decade. So this is going to go a little longer than usual. I think we're in like the 15-minute range or so. But um, yeah, as soon as I am done talking here, you get a little way in, a little, you have to be a fly on the wall at one of these meetings. So with that, I'm just going to shut up and let you listen in. Enjoy. So this actually came up for me also in a couple sessions that I just did in my office I don't know, four days ago. And the reason it came up was not exactly the reason that I'm going to tell you why it's important, but it came up because of personality differences. So let me just, by a show of hands, how many of you on here have struggled before with just accomplishing the things you want to accomplish? There are things in your life you want to get done and they're just not getting done. Here, I'll put this on. How many people have had that? Okay, cool. So I was, um, and then actually along with that, how many of you consider yourselves really, really motivated and excited and go-getters. Okay. So what's interesting is I'm in that category where I always consider myself like, like a really super motivated, purposeful person. And yet I would say up until eight, nine, maybe 10 years ago at most, um, it would be really hard for me to follow through and get anything done. Like anything. Um, I was in this couple's session and the husband was struggling with a really similar set of things. Um, He had things that we would agree upon in meetings, right? Like they're paying me a shit ton of money to sit in a meeting and agree on next steps. And then the next time, maybe one out of eight would get done. His wife, his partner, understandably is questioning his motivation and his dedication to this thing. And he's like, no, 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 I really want, and I care about it. It's just, I can't remember these things. They slip out of my mind. And it, It brought me back to why I put in some of the things we're going to talk about here today for myself about a decade ago that has now developed into a checklist in my life. And the reason was I would mess shit up that is not even, it shouldn't even be on the list of things you could fuck up. Like, um, I'll give you just really clear examples. Like I would triple book myself to hang out with friends and I'm not showing off that I have a lot of friends. I'm saying there would be like, cause I don't, but it'd be like a Friday and I would tell one friend that I could hang out with him and another friend I'm going to go to the movies with him. And then another friend that I'm going to meet him Saturday morning and I'm not going out till late at night, Friday. And then I would almost inevitably fuck all of them up. Potentially one of those friends would check in with me that morning and it would remind me that I have something to do with him. And then that'd be the only thing that I really remember I have to do. I'd go with that person. And then what happens? The other people in your life are like, dude, what the fuck? 
how many people have had that happen? Somebody reaches out to you like, bro, we had, a, I'm not even hearing from you. Like, well, how are you MIA on me like this? What's going on? My entire life was like that. It's not, I'm not exaggerating. I'm not embellishing for the point of the story. I would not get anything done except for the thing that was right in front of my face in the moment that it was there. Period. Homework never got done. In, the, in Israel, it didn't matter because in Israel, if you got really good grades on tests, nobody cared about your homework. I moved to the US. I went from a straight A student to a C student because uh, teachers in the US check your homework. I think I might have told this story before, but my, there was a random homework check in my math class in high school. This was the random homework check in my math class. Mr. Lutterbein, I will never forget his name. He would, uh, he would go, okay, random homework check. And then he would walk slowly to my desk. Mr. Jaffe, do you have your homework for today? And my answer would always be no. Always. And three times a week, he would walk up to my desk and the random homework check and check on me. And I would always not have it done. It was to everybody else on the outside. It looked like I didn't give a fuck about anything. Inside, it was like this mess of constant anxiety, trying to figure out what I'm supposed to do. Constantly not remembering it. I would have these journals that I would start using at the beginning of the school year. I was so excited about them. I was so excited. I loved them. I would write my plans. First day of class, I'm like writing all the assignments. I'm going to have all this shit done. I would write the, all the future assignments. Never fucking looked at it again. Just never looked at it again. It would have about a week's worth of assignments to get done. And by week one, it was over. I just wouldn't do it. So, my grades suffered. My relationship suffered. Everybody in my life just thought, I don't care. That's literally the, the explanation they had for it. And for me, it felt so debilitating. Um, I tried everything. There was Some of you are really young, so excuse me for speaking a language you don't understand right now. Um, remember the Palm Pilot? Those of you who are at least my age? Okay. When the Palm Pilot came out, I was like, yes, a digital way to do the thing. It'll remind me when I have the appointment. So I bought a Palm Pilot and I put the stuff in. Anybody, can anybody guess what happened after that? I'd forget the Palm Pilot everywhere. So the Palm Pilot would stay at home. It would stay in my, when I was in college, like in my dorm room. Sometimes it would be my bag, but my bag wouldn't be with me. It was terrible. So now I had like three places to forget shit. Eventually, these phones came out. And I'm not, the reason there's a 10-year timeline, what I'm talking about, is my ability to be a normal human being and the invention of these all-in-one computers that we carry in our pockets came together. I don't know that I'd be able to teach you what I'm teaching you right now because that was the first step for me before these things showed up. Because when these things showed up, when I would put an appointment, at least my phone would start bothering the hell out of me um, when that thing was coming closer. Does that make sense? Okay. So my entire life, I lived like that. Relationships, I would miss dates. Like it was just, it was embarrassing. It was constantly embarrassing. And when it came time, so one of the first things that I actually got good at doing was when I was in rehab and going to meetings, like, because they made you do it. And it was the same time. It was the same, right? You, you would go to the same meetings at the same time. And one of the things that landed on me about a decade ago was, oh, I am terrible at doing things that don't happen regularly. Now, I don't know if that speaks to all of you. If it doesn't, this might not be the answer for you, what I'm about to reveal. But I'm not good. I'm horrible at just keeping track of things that happen sporadically. I'm really good at doing the same thing over and over and over again. Now, what I mean by that is this. If you tell me that every day at nine o'clock, we jump on a Zoom call, I'm going to I'm going to hit pretty hard on that. Like I, I might get eight out of 10, nine out of 10, even at the beginning. Now it might, it might take me a moment to lock into that schedule, but like in college when there was a quarter and I had classes all at the same time, I didn't have a problem remembering when those classes were, but homework came and went. There were things that people asked me to do. You know, I didn't have like a set guys night. Some of my friends have like a set guys night, you know, poker night, or they hang out with their friends, watch sports or whatever. Those things are easier for me to remember. Like I haven't missed, I've missed two of these meetings in three years that I've held them. And, um, and even those two, I was like out of the country and had somebody else replace them for me. Right now, the fact that if there is something that happens regularly, I can remember it and show up to it. 
And the fact that we now have these devices and these ways to, to kind of create systems for ourselves created the magic for me. And where I had to start, and this is the hard part, where I had to start was I had to create a ritualized way of letting myself check in every day on the things that I didn't know were coming. Let me repeat that again. I had to make a system whereby every day there was an opportunity. So that happened the same time every day in the same sequence. It's not about time. It's actually about sequencing. But I would make sure that my days ran so that I would have an opportunity at the beginning of the day to look at what's happening the rest of the day. And it was that consistent opportunity at the beginning of the day that allowed me to not miss things later. Okay. Now I've expanded it a lot. So now I have a weekly version of that and a daily version of that. We're not going to start with the complicated set. We're going to start with the simple version. So by show of hands, I think this is going to be simple. How many of you wake up every morning? Okay, good. Perfect. Just making sure you're still listening. Okay. So we all wake up every morning. Now, know it or not, you have a ritual. You already have one. It's in place as we speak. How many of you wake up and look at your phone? Raise your hand. Don't be ashamed. One, two, three, four, five. Two hands with for Angie. I'm going to count you twice. Um, it's like six or seven of you. I think I've got one screen. Sorry, let me look at the second screen. How many of you on this? my second screen? How many of you do that? Raise your hand. I got okay. So we got like a good half of you do this. I used to do the exact same thing. Like it or not, that's a habit. I wake up, I look at my phone. How many of you do it before you brush your teeth, before you go to the bathroom, before you do anything else, right? It's like, wake up, okay, perfect. Now, hopefully for some of the rest of you, after you look at your phone, you brush your teeth and you do all that other stuff, right? So that comes in after, I hope. If it, if it doesn't, you don't have to raise your hand right now, it's all good. Um, so that comes in after. So now you have a checklist. You just never thought about it. You never put it in the, you never actively considered, what do I want to do in the morning? You just let it play out. You do it every morning. It's consistent. Wake up, check your phone, 30 seconds of brushing your teeth, maybe even pee while holding your phone. I don't know. You just kind of go through the beginning of the day and, and that is, that's your morning. Here's the problem with that system. I had it for almost my entire life. Now, if it wasn't phone before, it would be like whatever the next thing is that occurred, right? I would just do the first thing that they showed up. Um, what happens when we do this nowadays is what you're essentially saying when you wake up is I want to give up control of my morning to whatever other people while I was asleep decided was important for me to look at. I'm going to explain that again. I run a company. We send you emails. Some of those emails are automated. Some of them I send myself. Um, they go out during the night, depending on where you are in the world while you're asleep in the middle of your day, whatever it is, right? That happens from every company that you I've ever participated in it. It also happens from friends, friends, family, etc. They have their life and they go, Hey, I want Paul to do something, or I want to let Paul know something, or your news app sends you an alert. By the way, this thing happened in the world. You're asleep. You have no idea this is happening. You're taking care of yourself. You're, you're good to your body, your mind. And then you wake up. And what you say, if you allow this thing to be the number of thing on your list, and I'm, I'm going to spend some time on it because it's important. I, Without getting rid of this first thing, I couldn't do anything else. I had to let this thing go. What you're saying is I've been asleep for eight hours and I care so much about what other people need for me that I'm going to completely throw off my day. I'm going to give complete control over my day from the moment I open my eyes to those other people. Now, here's a cute thing about it. If they sent you good stuff, you have a great day. New job that you got, won some money in the lottery. Uh, an article you wrote got accepted to the New York Times, right? Great. The, the $1 offer on that brand new mansion on the beachfront that you, that you put in, it got accepted. You're having the best that you've ever had. But how many of those are the emails you get and how many of those are the emails you pay attention to? A very small amount. Most of the time, it's like, hey, I need this from you. Hey, you got to do this. Hey, have you done that already? I'm waiting for three days, right? Like that's most of the shit that you get. So the moment you wake up and you're already, your cortisol level is already the highest it's going to be for the day when you wake up, you essentially kick yourself into anxiety and panic mode from the get-go. That's it. You have now said, 
I'm cool. I'm just going to be panicked for the morning. It's all good. Doesn't matter. Just by picking up that phone. Now forget, I'm going to add stuff to it. The biology of the, the white light, the blue white light that goes at you right in the morning when your body is still recovering and kind of waking up. All that stuff is just the biology on top of it. But in terms of your mind, it doesn't matter what state you woke up in. You have now given up control, not just of your morning, of the rest of your day. You are now already playing catch up and the day just started. So the first thing you have to do, first thing you have to do is you have to train yourself to not look at this fucking thing. Now, if this is hard for you, start small, 15 minutes. Give yourself 15 minutes of not looking at your phone first. Now, as you know, those of you who've been with me for a while, not doing something is not the right solution. So we're going to put something else instead. And, and this is your opportunity to start creating your checklist. So I showed you guys my checklist, Paul, you, you wanted to see like the specifics of it today uh, and, or last time, and we'll work through the specifics. That's fine. Your checklist will not be my checklist. So I'm totally cool sharing it with you, but as a model, as a template. But if you don't do anything like this right now, let's create a checklist just for those first 15 minutes, right? Let's create the things you're going to do for the first 15 minutes of your day so that when you're not looking at your phone, you're not just sitting there like, all right, I got this phone. You don't have control over me, right? That's what a lot of us do. They're like, you sit around, you're like, no, I'm not going to look at it yet. I'm like, well, you're fucking, you're letting your phone still take over your life. So that's not helping. You, we got to put something else instead. So I'm going to give options. And then I do, I want to kind of open this up for conversations because I saw some things that people said already. And I'll tell you some of the things that have worked out for me in the past, but it's yours. This is what I landed on. My five-minute journal is the thing that got me out of um, the first going to my phone. And I'll tell you, you know, I called my book The Abstinence Myth on Purpose, people. Nobody wants to quit shit. So I called it, if I could have called it, you don't have to quit, I probably would have done that. But I felt like people wouldn't really know exactly what I'm talking about. Anyway. This book is called Five Minute Journal for a reason. Nobody wants to journal for an hour. Nobody wants to journal for a half an hour. Five minutes. I can do five minutes. And they're not lying, by the way. I hope I'm not lying in my book either. I'm just saying, right? Five minutes. It takes me five minutes to do this thing in the morning. So I could do that. I put that in there. And at first, all I did, my entire checklist was five minute journal and making coffee. That was my checklist when I started out. Now, having done this work for a long time now, my coffee making was supposed to be like mindful coffee making. I'll explain what that is in a second. How many of you use like an espresso or one of those, I hit a button and the coffee gets made for me kind of things? Don't use that shit. By the way, I love the coffee. I love an espresso. We have a machine. Here's the problem. You know this. You push the button and then you go do something else. You know it. It's what movie was it? Was it fucking Wally? -E? What movie was it where like the future version of people just sat in goddamn chairs and floated around, and everything got done for them? Do not be that person. Start doing your own shit. <laughs> Start go back to the point where you did shit. Right? We let too much other stuff create our reality for us. And then we wonder why we fill our times with staring blankly at screens. So my coffee making, I, like when I learned about pour over coffee, I started doing pour over coffee. Now I make a bigger version, like one of, I forget what they call them, like the boy on whatever things, those, guys, those big guys, because our family drinks a good amount of coffee. But here's the process I go through. And if I do my job well, especially if my daughter hasn't woken up quite yet, I do it really mindfully. And if that happens, it's like a 10 to 12 minute process. So I buy beans. I don't buy pre-ground coffee. I have a grinder next to the coffee maker. I grind the beans and I wait for them to finish. I fill up the carafe that like, like boils the water, the uh, electric tea kettle. I, I fill up that and I go back. The entire time, what is mindfulness? Do you guys remember for the, from the course what mindfulness is? Paying attention to a specific activity for a certain amount of time with as little judgment as possible. Right? So my job, yes, and it tastes amazing. So my job, by the way, everything you fucking pay attention to tastes better than the shit you just shovel down your goddamn throat. So this works in every other area of life. 
I'm still mastering the other areas, but morning I got pretty locked down. So I make a call, like I take the grounds, I get the filter out for the thing, I put it on top, I put the grounds in. And the whole time, my job is just to pay attention to me making the coffee. So I'm looking and it's like, oh, is there, are there enough grounds? That's it. I'm not thinking about anything else. My entire mind is focused on the coffee. I boil the water. Uh, we make superfood coffee in our house. I say we, I say, I mean, I, um, so that requires me to like use the blender. So while that other stuff is being made and I can share a recipe with you guys, if you guys want to to know what it is, it's essentially like, honestly, it's a half a meal in my coffee. Um, I I do intermittent fasting, so I don't really eat in the morning. So this helps kind of bolster that to some extent. Um, so while the water is boiling, I'm putting the other things in the blender that need to go in it. Everything I've described up to now, between this, doing that, and then starting to make the coffee, the first 10 to 15 minutes of my day have already passed. I haven't looked at my phone. I don't care what anybody else needs from me right now. I am starting my day the way that I want to start it. And how many times here before have we talked about letting other people what they think of us, what they want from us, who they imagine we should be, control our lives. How many times, like, I don't even know, like 50 different hours here have been spent on that concept. We're doing it to ourselves every morning with this thing. And I feel it. If I slip up and in the middle of doing the journal, I look, so it actually, now I have to look at my calendar because the five minute journal asks like, what would make today great? And I look at my calendar to see what's up. The days that I do that, I'm fine. The days that I go over to email and just very quickly check my email in the middle of checking my calendar throws my day off. I can feel it. I feel the difference, right? Remember I talked to you guys before about some of you, a lot of you are coming to me right now for, I don't want to relapse. Remember we talked about that. And then a little while down the line, Dumont, you're in that place right now. And I, I will absolutely respond at least to some of the things also by email, but hopefully here too. Um, then you go, oh, look, I'm not going to relapse, but I'm doing kind of shitty. And now being doing shitty is already considered a relapse for you. Then you get to a place where you're like, damn, I'm having, I've had a few off days in a row. I'm, I'm heading down the wrong path. That's a relapse. I, I th- I've told you before, I'm like four or five steps removed from a relapse. Now, when I wake up in the morning, I can tell the difference between how I slept last night what my morning ritual is like, it al- I can already tell it throwing me off. I'm not going to let it get to I'm having a terribly shitty day. I'm just not. I'm not. So five-minute journal, and in the middle of my coffee, I'm already 10, 12, 15 minutes into my day. Nobody else has interfered. So I finish. I go through that whole process, and I finish making the coffee. That was my ritual to start out, I'll be honest. Now, here's the thing. What you allow is... Some of you have never had 15 minutes to your fucking self. And when I say you've never had them, I mean, that time that you spend in your head thinking about other people, that's not time to yourself. My work wants this. My parents told me I got to fill out this form. My blah, 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 blah. The government needs this for me. Those things are all relevant. I'm not telling you ignore them. But you got to start your day on an equal footing. You start doing this now. It doesn't have to be the same thing that I did. It doesn't. Thank you for tuning in to the Ignited Heroes Recovery Podcast. I really hope you found the information here useful and that we'll see you back here next week. And look, I want to make sure that this podcast is the most useful it can be for you. So please let me know by emailing info at ignited.com if there are any specific topics or questions you'd like to have addressed. As usual, if you like this episode, I would love for you to leave us a five-star review and rating. Thanks and see you next week.